Let's see. Let's see. That was like way too many explanation points, but that's uh, fine. <coughs> um, there we go. Oh, I can't wear my hat. That's what. Oh, I felt so naked. Okay. Let me share that on. Uh, Who's up? Oh, fuck. I, mm, I didn't tell anyone to stream tonight. Well. Hmm. Hmm. That's tricky. May have messed up there. Possibly messed up there. Well. Hey, what's good? Hey, what's up, Supreme? How you doing? Hey, what's up, Jevya? Hey, we're, uh, we're trickling in. We're trickling in. How you doing? You guys read anything cool this week? It's actually not a super big week. Uh, well, I mean, it kind of was a super big week, but my comic store was one of those uh, shops that uh, apparently got hit with, like, a really big, uh, um, like, diamond accident situation, so we didn't get any Marvel comics in this week, so, ah, that just meant I got to pick up some of the old DC books that I didn't get and some of my indie books that I got kind of been neglecting, um, uh, today was the, yeah, today was State of Play. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, sweet. Um, I didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, I was at work all day. Um, I did see some of the Spider-Man, um, gameplay trailer. It's like a long trailer. I guess, like, demo. I saw, like, the Spider-Man demo, but, uh, or, like, part of it, but I didn't see the whole thing. Um, I actually... Fuck it. You, shall we just do that now? Cause I can just do that now. Yeah, man. Let's just do it. Let's do that now. Let me let me uh, let me pull that up. Um, Supreme says, uh, "Which superhero would smoke weed?" Uh, no. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Well, I'll, I'll hear you out. No, seriously. Uh, cause I've seen heroes do alcohol, heroin, but never ganja. Uh, just curious. Um. Well. I could see like Stephanie Brown sparking uh, sparking up. I could see uh, mm, Plastic Man. Plastic Man sparks up. Uh, Miles Morales, but like specifically the Into the Spider Verse version, you know. Um, hmm. The others are like a little too like yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, Miles in the Into the Spider Verse version probably does, or like has friends that do, and he's like, like he'll probably like hot box with one of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like that's like always the weird thing with like substances in superhero media because like being a superhero is like a like a physically stressful kind of kind of gig like you you need to be in like optimum shape and a lot of recreational substances like weed or alcohol or even like hard drugs they like really damage your body so it's not really in your best interest if you're a superhero to like do drugs of any kind really uh well no i take that back uh There, there are some, like, I, I guess you could count, like, performance enhancers. Like, B12. Like, I, mean, I guess if we're going to count B12 as, like, a drug. Like, yeah, B12. Um, Batman is like, canonically done cocaine. <laughs> In fact, Batman's canonically done everything. <laughs> uh, so, there's, there's that. I guess Batman, maybe. Batman smokes weed. Um, or, like, has smoked weed in the past. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's just not a thing, like, I, I can see superheroes really doing. It's just... I, I feel like superheroism, if we're gonna, like, take the, the cringe pop psychology angle, uh, is, like, an addiction in and of itself. It's like a drug on its own, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't really see anyone smoking weed, really. Um, but... Yeah, I I guess I hope that's a that's a solid question or answer to your question. Um, but yeah, let me uh, let me boot up the. Uh, what about Roy Harper Arsenal? Uh, no, he did heroin. Um, and uh, was an alcoholic for like a period of time. But that was like in his in his. <laughs> In his, like, prime, just everything sucks phase. Um, and he wasn't really doing a lot of superheroing in that time period either. Um, or at least I don't remember him doing a lot of superheroing. Uh, although it's been a while since I read, like, that hard traveling heroes material. Um, right, let me boot this up. Uh, and let me make it so that you guys can also see me watching it. Um, what did you guys think of the uh the Spider-Man two reveal stuff? Um. I mean, I'm just, like, happy that they finally have something. It's been, like, what, a year? Like, a year and a half since they revealed that whole, uh, like, little two-minute teaser bit for, uh, uh, first game. I'll do it like this. Um, okay. Let's see what uh see what this game's got to offer. Let's see what you got to offer. Uh Actually, I forgot I'll just blast the uh, the volume. Um, that was good, Arcus. Uh, Steph would definitely uh, smoke ganja, but Tim would be a total narc. Alan Grant wrote uh, Shadow of the Bat issue where Tim was totally anti-weed. 
That's true. There's the, there's also the whole thing where I think culturally you have to look at the time and place and when these things come out. Um, like Tim in the '90s would totally be against weed. I think Tim in like the 2000s, or like the 20. Oh, fuck, we're in the 2020s now, aren't we? Jesus Christ, comics are old. These characters are old. I'm old. Oh, we're all old. Um, but yeah, I think like. I think Tim Drake now would be, like, a little more lax on it. Um, he'd be more worried about other drugs like like fentanyl and stuff like that. Uh, now that, I mean, at, at least in America, you could just go to a, like, your local weed store and just buy weed. Um, America's a very bizarre country. Uh, I love it, but, like, Jesus, I don't, I don't understand my country sometimes. Um, <laughs> cause people are like still in jail for like something that's totally legal now. Um, what is a superhero, but a miserable pile of retcons? Oh, <laughs> uh, my Dracula voice wasn't on point there, but you know, I tried. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's all superheroes at this point. Uh, <sighs> But yeah, let's let, let's let's get this uh let's get this trailer going. Can you hear the game all right? I hear the trailer. It it's so funny. I I thought this was Craven when I first saw the, uh, <laughs> the opening to the trailer. I was so happy when I saw that guy. There he is. Yeah, my man's is like chill. I bet that was like one of Craven's 800 children. Or all something the hunter. Nice jacket, too. They got the vest and all that. They made it look cool. That's. I'm with it. Wait, hold up, what? Hold on. Hold on a second. Wait. You can play in... So... Like, what, wait, what am I, what am I freaking out over? Yeah, I, I saw this. I tweeted about this, like, like, a couple hours ago. Dude, I'm tired. I... I'm, like, so tired when I get in from work. I'm sorry, guys. Like, yeah, I... Of course I knew this. Yeah, uh... But, yeah, you can, uh... You can play in, um... Queens and Brooklyn now. That's dope. It's, like, the first Spider-Man game since, like, Ultimate Spider-Man you could do that. Um... Wow, I, like, really made a whole point about that earlier. I just totally blanked. God. First time of a stroke. Hope I'm not dying. Um... Dude, Craven's built like an absolute unit, though. Oh my god. Yeah, the, 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 the Wraith in there. I think those are all like possible boss fights. God, that is so cool. We're finally going to be in Queens again. Hmm. 
Yeah, so they're like definitely going with the uh, the Web of Shadows like hentai tentacle route. That's pretty good for like a like gameplay uh, purposes though. I'm like down with it. Your Lonethal is really putting in that, like... Shocker! You can't escape me! <laughs> He's, like, really selling it, though. Okay, so this is in Queens. That means, like, that's probably Yanami's house. Or I guess it's like Peter's house now. Sounds like Craig is checking off his. He don't have much time. Move. Uh, guess we'll chat later. Game looks really good. Janky. Let me uh, up these. Uh, there we go. Ooh, so they like. So like really doubling down on the whole like post MCU uh wingsuit thing. I guess that's like just one of those like I like it in a video game in a way where I probably wouldn't like it in like a comic or a movie but so if it's for like the purpose of a gameplay I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it oh oh sweet that was almost in the first game it's like mod that though Okay. Alright. Execute my electro powers. I still don't know what electricity has to do with, like, spiders, but, you know. Still cool, still fun. Maybe it's just because Miles is black. All black supergirls have to have electricity powers. Just a rule. The unwritten, like, unofficial rules of black superheroes. Oh, this looks so good. I'm in the minority. I actually like the Nightwing uh, red arms that uh, Miles has now. I think it looks really good. Oh wow. My oh, man says like all the hentai in the cynicals. Hey man. Hey, the building's swarming with hunters. Any sign of Connor? Uh yeah. Genki's tracking him. Hey, Mr. Parker. Mr. Spider Man. Oh, I guess he just knows. Yeah. But the date is incomplete. Alright. Okay, I think I gotta walk. Hey, wait, he chill. 
Me neither. I don't even have a stomach, so... Let's go! Holy crap, he's massive. Whoa! Yeah, they're not going like the, the whole lab coat route with him, I guess. Can't lose Connors. The hair is dying, and he's the only one who can help. We won't. You think it's wrong? I got the jet ski. You want my borrow this? Really, really. God, this open world looks so massive. Watch out for those drones. Don't worry. I mean, not to be a size queen about it, but like this just looks like really big and really fun. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get hit so many times because I am terrible at dodging with these uh, car chase sequences. Hey, my boy. Okay. God, this looks so good. Oh, he's black webbing too. That's cool. It's like very. It's like very post uh, spectacular Spider-Man. Oh, you got uh, the web wings too. Gary Lowenthal's really putting on that, like, eh, eh, kind of voice. Not sure how I feel about it yet. I want to go back, but I'm just going like, to let it play out. Oh my god, dude. That is, like, the... Biggest I think I've ever seen the lizard. Looks kind of like the iguana. It's like not even really a li uh, like a lizard design. That's like a kaiju right there. It's like kind of cool. Jesus, that is, yeah. He's like the size of Arkham Killer Croc. I wonder how many hours into the game this takes place. Family Guy Spider-Man moment. You just like grabbed him and say, "Ugh!" Everybody gets one. <laughs> just, eh, fuck off. <laughs> oh, that was funny. It's good, Pete. Oh man. I think the tracker. Let's go he has like a little like. No. He's got like the ball sack like sure? pattern on his arms That's and legs Pete. and his neck. So do I. It's like weird. Oh, he also, oh, yeah. 
Hmm. All right. Well. Looks pretty good. Uh. All right. Um. Hmm. Uh, so, what are y'all's thoughts? Uh, I have some immediate, like, like, fanboy dorky thoughts, but, like, you have no idea. I'll leave it there. Uh, but yeah, what do you, what do you guys think? Um... I take this over the comics any day. <laughs> well, I mean that's not that's not super hard right now. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Um, Fall twenty twenty three. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Godzilla. <laughs> oh yeah, that dude. That is like. Hold on a second. Let me, let me find it. Um. This is like the most monstrous I think I've ever seen the lizard. Like, right there? Dude. Like, that's... I'm sorry, that's a kaiju, dog. <laughs> uh, like, hold on. Where's one of the ones where, like, he almost eats Miles? And, like, one swallow, too, because he's... Like, his jaws are the size of this... Teenage boy. Like, look at that. He's the size of a boat. Dog, that is... Yeah, that's like the biggest I think I've ever seen the lizard in anything. Um... Yeah, it's like, Insomniac's really going for that, uh... That, like... Mindless, like, beast kind of lizard take. Uh, I, I personally don't mind it. Uh, I know, like, some Lizard, or, like, some Spider-Man fans, I, I almost said Lizard fans, no one's really a Lizard fan. Um, I know some Spider-Man fans are, like, iffy on that. I don't, I don't mind it. Uh, I like when the Lizard is, like, a dark personality for Dr. Connors, and his whole thing is, like, I'm going to turn everybody in the city into lizards like me. Like, I like that version of the lizard, but I also like the... I like the Mindless Beast Lizard. Um, it was, like, really kind of fun. Uh, especially, like, in Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, or, like, even the Spider-Man uh, team-up with Man-Thing. Which has not been collected in anything. I like, had to hunt that down and, like, buy that physically. Like, it was insane. Um... It's, which is also weird because that issue is like really important to Ultimate Spider-Man, and it's just not collected in anything. I don't, I don't know what the editors are thinking there, um, or maybe they someone just forgot about it. But yeah, I I like Mindless Beast Lizard. It, it, it'll probably be like for wow words. It'll probably be for some like really fun gameplay. Uh, Craven looks awesome. Yeah, I really like Craven's look. I like how they're taking Craven like kind of seriously. Uh, he's one of those characters we can kind of do him either way. I know for a long time Craven was kind of a joke uh, until he wasn't, <laughs> and then he became a joke again, and then he then he wasn't. Uh, it it works either way. Um, I'm glad they're going with the the, the more serious kind of version of Craven, like the one who's like actually a threat for Spider-Man. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Because they very easily could have just gone the ultimate Spider-Man direction and just make him like a dorky version of Steve Irwin. Um, but I'm, I'm glad they didn't. Insomniac ripping off Spider-Man 3. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Um... Also, it looks like they're ripping off uh, Spider-Man 
Shattered Dimensions. Not Shattered Dimensions. What's the one that came after Shattered Dimensions? Um, uh, or before Shattered Dimensions. Uh, Web of Shadows. Yeah, they're, they're doing their rough on Web of Shadows. Uh, especially with like all the, the hentai tentacle attacks that Spider-Man can do. Which, I guess that's just a standard when it comes to the black suit now. Like, the, the black suit is, it is hentai beast. It's big black hentai beast. Uh, like, just, yeah. Alright. Alright, All right, before we go any further, I'm gonna just say this. I respect artistic ingenuity i respect creativity i, I respect when people want to put their own little little twist and flavor on things um but looking at this uh looking at this looking at uh looking at all of this with with all the, the 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 all of the the whatever this is with all the definition and the lines and muscle tones and stuff again i respect it i respect the creators i respect the the artists work working on this um looking at this though i i totally get where superman fans who are like just anal retentive when it comes to any form of redesign for his costume I, I get it. You know, I, 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 I do get it. Because um, Superman's not a character that I, like, I, I love as a kid and love growing up. That's a character I come to later in life. and kind of res I kind of respect alternate takes on that character. I'm more open to them. Um, so I'm cool with, like, redesigning the Superman costume and all that. Uh, but the same way Superman fans freak out when, like, Ah, you took the underwear off or... The, the cape isn't 7.23 centimeters below the, the, the butt line of the of the trunks where the trunk should sit. The, the, the belt is not the, the appropriate shade of yellow. Oh! Like, in the same way Superman fans kind of do that, I'm, I'm kind of maybe fighting myself doing that with the black suit here. Um... Guys, it's a simple costume. It's just a black bodysuit with a white spider across the chest and white eyes and the the little the 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 the, the, the hand patches uh what is this what are we doing here what so we got like we got we got like burnt leather dom daddy and like wrinkled ball sack uh like, I really don't know what we're trying to do with this costume here. It, 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 it feels like they overthought it. Just a little bit. Um, like, it all, like, this feels like what I would imagine... Like, the 2015-era MCU black suit Spider-Man would look like. Just a lot of lines for no reason. Um, maybe it'll grow on me. You know, uh, sometimes that happens with superhero costumes. Um, I know I had that with like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man costume. That's a costume I did not like when I first saw it, but it really grew on me. Um, uh, you know, the attacks look cool though. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is just a costume I'll, I'll just have to have grow on me over time, but... Immediate thoughts are, are, are what, what am I looking at? <laughs> uh... Uh... <laughs> uh... Hey, what's up, Ziggy? How you doing, man? Um... It looks very tactical. Yeah, it does look very tactical. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling it just like on the, on the offset, but 
it can win me over. Like I've I've had that with superhero costumes in the past before. They they, I don't know. Uh. Beanie, uh, simple black texture would look very weird and lazy, uh, on this overly realistic model. It's a loose, loose situation. It's a lose, lose situation. Um, I mean, I hear you on that, but I also really like the Midnight Suns black suit. Where, I mean, I haven't played Midnight Suns, but I've seen cutscenes where it kind of looks like 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 it's like it's mimicking human muscul musculature, uh, so I I thought that I thought it looks pretty cool in that game. Um, here it just kind of looks like I don't know, I I don't know I I, I knee jerk reaction, uh, but I could be open to you know really liking it in the future. Uh, I mean I had the same reaction to the the PS4 costume, like if you go back and watch my reaction to that uh that first trailer back in like what 27 no 16 2016 yeah i didn't like that costume at all but i love it now so i don't i might just have to live with it for a while um uh, i'm livid uh, currently deep cleaning uh an area rug uh, in the sunroom at 11 o'clock at night I have to wake up at 4 a.m. Dude, go to sleep. Bro, dude, <laughs> please don't. I, like, kind of did that this morning. Like, I, I, I mean, it wasn't an area rug. I had to do laundry, but, like, I had to, I had to do, uh, like, a, like, a major laundry load at, like, 5 in the morning, and I had to be up at, uh, I had to be up at 7. Yeah, dude, go to bed. <laughs> go to bed, bro. Please sleep. <laughs> Oh man. Um, I do realize we're gonna get different costumes. It's just the default costume looks kind of eh. Um, the Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Black suit sucked. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that one. Um, now, how do you think Harry Osborn is dying? Well, they they said it in the first game, right? He has like that uh, retro viral hyperplasia or whatever disease from the amazing spider-man 2 that this insomniac video game franchise just sort of like ripped off uh i don't know uh it, <laughs> uh it's co comic diseases it's, it's, it's all mcgregor syndrome that's all it is <laughs> if you got a mystery disease it's mcgregor syndrome uh you like the black suit okay Superman's belt should be black. I like when Superman's belt is black. Uh, I I really don't like Kingdom Come, but I like the design from Kingdom Come. I think the the, the Kingdom Come design looks really good. Um, you don't like how the black suit looks? It's like too simplistic, like a fetish leather. Yeah, he has like the the leather daddy thing going. I don't I don't know. It's it's weird. Uh, wait, Web of Shadows was disappointing to you. What, Tevye? What are you talking about, man? What are you what are you, what are you going on about? What are, you, what are you talking about? Web of Shadows is like still. I mean, still to me, it's like the best Spider-Man game. I don't know. It's. I still really like it. Uh, it's like the last Spider-Man game that actually feels like it takes place in the Marvel Universe. I hope we do get some more Marvel Universe-isms in this game. Uh, the first game had some, but like the... I don't know. I, I would like to see posters of like Iron Man or Thor or advertisements for... You know, hey, come work at the Baxter building and join the Fantastic Four. You know, I'd like to see some more stuff like that. Uh, like, the last like Spider-Man game to really ever do that is Web of Shadows. Um, 
Like, I don't necessarily need to see the Avengers in this game. Um, or, like, the Fantastic Four or the X-Men, but, like, I, I would like to just... I would like for their existence to be acknowledged a little, a little more. Uh, uh, Ziggy says uh, he'll be alive and working as the Hobgoblin by the end of the DLC for the next game. Oh man, I could see that. You think they're gonna? Yeah, you think they're gonna go the uh, the ultimate Spider-Man route and have Harry be the Hobgoblin? That seems to be like a standard uh, direction to go with Harry Osborn nowadays. Just nix the whole hobgoblin mystery like BS. With, Is it Roderick Kingsley? Is it Flash Thompson? Is it Ned Leeds? Whoa. Nope, nope, it's Harry Osborn. Harry Osborn is the Green Goblin. Uh... I wonder what the Green Goblin is going to look like in this game. Because I'm like 90% convinced he's going to be in this game. Like as the the, the mystery villain. Uh, in the same way that like Otto was the mystery villain of the, the first game. Between this Spider-Man PS5 game and Across the Spider-Verse, those stories beat the comics any day right now, which suck. Yeah, I mean, but again, it's not a... That's, that's like going like, alright, which is better? Um, eating cotton candy or, or uh, being castrated by way of uh, the chick from the Antichrist movie? Whose name I can't remember, but she was also the actress from Nymphomaniac. I think. I think. Maybe. I'm not sure if you guys have seen that movie, so if you haven't, I'm probably just sounding like I'm speaking weird, masochistic gibberish, but I, that's, that, that's the, that was the best thing that I could draw from for comparison's sake. Uh, oh, the voice acting in Web of Shadows sucked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh I remember when we first saw those uh snippet trailers for Spider Man Shadow Dimensions, I was so relieved. I was so relieved that we got some more traditional Spider Man voice actors in there. Like we got Josh Keaton, we got uh uh Christopher Daniel Barnes, although I didn't really agree with Christopher Daniel Barnes as being 2099, but that's that's a whole thing. Uh, I feel like Miguel's voice should be like like gruffer and and more kind of like like he's always irritated. Um, like I'm I'm really excited for Oscar Isaac's to be uh, the voice of Miguel in Across the Spider Verse. I think he's the the perfect voice for for Miguel. I also think Miguel Ferreira would have been a pretty good voice actor for Spider-Man 2099, given how the character sort of based on him in like a, like a kind of weird way, because uh, him and Peter David were like friends at some point in time, or I guess in, friends in college or whatever. Um, so Peter David kind of like based a character off him, and that's Miguel O'Hara. Um, for anyone who does, doesn't know who that is, Miguel Ferreira is the voice actor for uh, Vandal Savage, um, also, uh, uh, he, he voiced, uh, Silvermane in Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, I think he would have been a really good, uh, like, voice actor to, to bring Miguel O'Hara to life at some point in time. Uh, although I think he, he died before Spider-Man 2099 really got, like, put into animation for anything. Um, but who was, it was like Josh Keaton, it was Christian Daniel Barnes, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, who I love, he's like one of my favorite Spider-Man voice actors, um, 
Was there a fourth voice actor, or, or did they just have Christopher Daniel Barnes do two Spider-Man voices? Hmm. I don't remember. Uh... Uh, oh, Stephen Blum. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait, no. It was, uh, it was Dan, uh, Gilvazin? I don't know that name from. Oh, he was Bumblebee in the Transformers movie. Okay. Huh. Well, there you have it. Um. You can't hide your fetishes. <laughs> I can try. I can try. I'm already wearing the beanie, man. Um. Do you have an Easter egg towards those people? Uh, oh, who the, the other Marvel characters or the, uh, or like the other hobgoblins? Well, let me like actually kind of get rid of this because this is like annoying. Uh, you just looking at like a, like a blank white screen. Um, nope. Nope, that's me. There we go. Uh, but yeah, no, the the game looks really fun. Um, I'm 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 gonna pick it up day one. Uh, <laughs> like I, I I just am. Uh, I love the first game a lot, so I'm I'm definitely gonna pick this game up. Uh. So you want to complain even more uh, about where's the Avengers or Fantastic Four while playing this game? <laughs> yes, I do. No, um, I mean like not the, the the only like problem I really had with like the first game was that the scale just got too big. Like that's like that's my problem with the first Spider-Man game. I, I feel like the scale gets to an Avengers level scale. Um. That's what I really liked about the Miles Morales Spider-Man game. Uh, even though the, the story is, like, very short, uh, you know, like, somewhat truncated, it it's still working on a Spider-Man scale, you know? Um, like, I'm, I'm not playing that game wondering, like, where the hell are the Avengers? You know, where where's the Fantastic Four? Where's Wolverine? Where's, where are the heroes? Where's Daredevil? You know, I'm not really wondering that when I'm playing the Miles Morales game because... It's it's a smaller, more intimate like story. Like I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I hope this game does that. Like I, I, I really hope this game kind of recognizes the scale that Spider-Man kind of operates on and doesn't doesn't put New York into like an apocalyptic scenario where I'm like, okay, okay, where are the Avengers though? <laughs> Like, I know this is a Spider-Man story, but, like, where are the other heroes? Um. Oh, Lokanda and Embassy? Um. But we did, we did get, like, Marvel Universe, uh, like, Easter eggs and stuff. Uh, it's just, like, we didn't... I wish we got, like, billboards and posters, sort of like how Spider-Man Web of Shadows did it, where, like, Tony Stark's not in the game, like, Iron Man's not in the game, but you see billboard advertisements for Stark Industries, or you'll see, um, like, the, the Baxter building all lit up, but the Fantastic Four are on an interdimensional mission, 
Uh, you also see like re- like Hydra recruitment ads, which is weird. It's basically like if they got like some white supremacist organization. Uh, they they just had flyers. They were giving out to people in like a major metropolitan city. I don't know. It was that's like that's like always the one Easter egg or like one little like greater Marvel universe reference. In Web of Shadows, where I'm like, that's, that's weird. That's weird, right? Like, like, that, that, that would get taken down real fast. Not even by, like, the police or the FBI or S.H.I.E.L.D. or the CIA or whoever, like, intelligence organizations. Work. Just normal people in the street would see that and just kick the sign over. Or, like, throw it in the trash. I don't, I don't know. Um. But. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, to me, Web of Shadows is, like, the benchmark for Spider-Man games still. Um, even, like, like the web swinging, I, I still think is, like, the best out of any of the Spider-Man games. Uh, I, I, although I, I really do, like the Miles Morales web swinging. I, I, I really like the, they, they kind of bring back the pendulum system. Um, and they also integrate, uh, aerial tricks into it too. But, uh, something about the weightlessness, but also like the, the, the heavy, like this is, they're working off the pendulum system. You know, it, 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 it feels like a guy is swinging off of a, a rope in web of shadows in a way that it kind of just doesn't. In the the more recent Spider-Man games, or I guess everything from Shattered Dimensions to now, uh, oh, uh, Chris Reed Daniel Barnes voiced Spider-Man uh, twenty ninety nine in Edge of Time. Okay, then he, he did a really good job in Edge of Time. Uh, oh, he was a Spider-Man in, uh, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends? Okay. Okay. Um, references to the other Hobgoblins? Okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, like, maybe, like, a little throwaway file here or there. Sort of like how the, the going away card from the Daily Bugle, you see Eddie Brock and Betty Brandt and, uh, Robbie Robinson's name all on the, on the card there. I can see that. I'm all for intimate stories with Spider-Man. Well, so is Mary Jane. And Black Cat. And Gloria Grant. And Betty Brandt. And Gwen Stacy. And Deb Whitman. And Carly Cooper. Liz Allen. Uh, that one chick who tried to get in her boyfriend with Peter... And you find out that her boyfriend's, like, totally okay with it, but he's still mad. Forget her name. That was, that was, that was, a, that was an interesting story, though. 80s was a great time for Spider-Man. Full of toxic masculinity. That's the secret ingredient to a good Spider-Man story, by the way. Yeah. Toxic masculinity. The secret ingredient. I'll die on that hill. Uh... <laughs> Um, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know. I was wondering where the other Avengers was during the climax of the Miles game. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I guess for me it was just, it was one of those situations where, everything, like, happens, like, in the moment. It's not a crisis that is being drawn out over a period of weeks. It just sort of happens over the course of, like, three hours. I can totally see the Avengers just... Where were the Avengers? They were off in space fighting Kang or Ultron or Loki. Because those are, like, the three Avengers villains, but... (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I can totally see that. Uh, uh, 
Uh, my hope is that we get Peter Parker and Mary Jane narrated in this universe because that would be really awesome and tons of fun. It'd be tons of fun for Peter, well, Peter Parker too, and Mary Jane. Um, although this version of Mary Jane is, is still a just I I don't like her. Uh, she <laughs> she's she's just too much Lois Lane and not enough Mary Jane. If 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 you're picking up what I'm putting down, if you're if you're scooping what I'm pooping, you know if you're if you're, if you're eating what I'm skeeting, you know she's just, just too I don't know. Uh, Spring says on X Men. Remember when Kitty said all those slurs in that one mutant kid's funeral? That's Kitty just trying to freestyle from the heart. Because my head cannon is that Hitty is a is a huge Beastie Boys fan. <laughs> oh man, I I posted on like my Instagram uh, a video of um. Like, I made a meme of, like, Kitty Pride and Jean Grey from X-Men Evolution. They're, like, dancing to uh, Niggas in Paris. And you have you have Rogue saying, Oh, Kitty, I love this song. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> never ask a man his height. Uh, never ask a woman how many men she slept with. And never ask Kitty Pride what her favorite song is. Three things you just don't ask. <laughs> oh man. Um Doc Ock and Sandman and Electro. Everyone wants and will peg you, Spider Man. <laughs> Jesus. Jotamate, Jotamate. What is this? Spider Man red and blue? Or I guess Superman red and blue? Whatever that Superman book was where you find out that he got in, the, in like a uh, Eastern European prison. <laughs> I get the call back. I, I get that he's calling back to like a, like a world's finest uh, like issue, but like Jesus Christ. Would not have written it that way. Definitely wouldn't have the artist draw it that way. Um... Uh, don't forget Anna Macaroni. I mean, I, I'm not forgetting Anna, but, like, she's not really... <sighs> That's always been a weird one, because she's not really Peter's girlfriend. That's that's Otto's girlfriend. And that whole thing is weird. I don't... Uh, uh, it makes my skin crawl. Uh, Dan Slot, why did you do that? Why, why, did you, why did you write that story, Dan? Uh... <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I also can just choose to ignore, like, Spider-Man continuity from the mid-90s to now. I just choose to do that. Uh, I'll pick and choose stuff I like, but... And I could get it. Well, um... There, there's a... There's a size joke in there somewhere. But I'll just have to be the bigger man here and uh, let it slip by me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, is she even still in Spider-Man comics? Is it, is, did she die at some point? <laughs> I'm like really not keeping up with anything Spider-Man related. Um. <laughs> uh, well, no, that's not true. Because uh, I did read Spider-Man Lost Hunt, which is like kind of like a like a slant-eyed sequel. Is that racist? I feel like that's racist. Um, all right, I take that back. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a it's like a cockeyed. That also feels racist. Fuck. Uh, or maybe it's racist because I'm thinking it's racist. If I don't think it's racist, then it's not racist. All right. So like it's a it's a. It's an eyes closed sequel to. <laughs> Not helping, um, but yeah, it's like a it's a it's a sort of sequel to to Craven's Last Hunt, and uh, I mean I like that a lot. That's like the most I've enjoyed current era Spider-Man comics. Um, 
that aren't that aren't this. Which I did pick up today. I picked up Spider-Man Life Story Extra today. Uh, this came out a couple weeks ago, I think, actually. Um, but I just I just, I just didn't have the money to get it because I'm trying to pay for other things <laughs> um, because life is expensive. But yeah, no, I uh, I I I really like this book, and I'm glad that I waited because this actually has the annual featuring J. Jonah Jameson in it, and J. J. gets like a really cool character arc in this uh, in this annual. It's like really heartbreaking too, but I mean. It's like fitting for Spider-Man though. Like Spider-Man comics are like, you know, half wacky adventure, half heartbreak. So I don't know. I'm, I'm like really into it. It also gives Jameson like consequences for his actions, in that he does like actually he ba he he he, he bankrolls a mercenary. Jameson, Jameson created a supervillain who did murder people. He is complicit in the crimes that he committed. So Jameson does have to go to jail for that. Uh, <laughs> so, like... Yeah, no, it's, like, really interesting watching Jameson go to jail and talk about how much he hates Spider-Man. <laughs> and he just, like, never really gets over it. Uh, God, it's funny. Um, I also think like like they they mentioned that like his son dies. I think like, do they say that John dies in this? Um, hmm, I don't. It's been a while since I actually like sat down and read the uh, the annual. Like I read it when it came out, but yeah, I don't think I actually like. Yeah, I got I gotta go back and read this, but yeah, this was like heartbreaking and God, I just love Mark Bagley's art on this. It's kind of bizarre. Like I I didn't think that Mark Bagley was the right guy to do this when I first read it. Um, that's mainly just because I, I associate Mark Bagley's art style with, like, a post-90s Spider-Man. Like, like, I, I, I think of Mark Bagley as, like, the modern Spider-Man writer, if you will. Um, so seeing him kind of, like, draw a supposedly, like, classic era Spider-Man just kind of felt wrong to me. Um, I, 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 I... I thought and kind of somewhat still think that it should have been uh, John Romita Jr. to do it. Uh, but I also get why they probably didn't want to get John Romita Jr. to do it. Um, his art is... <sighs> he's he's doing some, some, some different techniques with his art. Uh, that, I don't know, uh, maybe don't quite fit with, like, the, 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 the storytelling that Zadarsky's trying to emulate. I don't know, but still, I, I really enjoy this book. Um, you still get, like, cool moments like this. Where Peter's like busting out of the grave with the Venom symbiote on him. God, it's such a beautiful page. I remember reading this just like freaking out. Like, oh my god, this is so dope. Uh. But yeah, I love Life Story. This is like one of my favorite Spider Man stories to come out the past couple years. I might end up doing a review for this. At some point in time. Um, but. Yeah. Uh, 
again, as far as like current era Spider Man goes in terms of comics, uh, I'm 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 really just kind of sticking to to stuff like this now. I'm sticking to miniseries and uh, reprints of older stuff that I haven't read or like haven't read in a long time. Uh, uh, what else did I get this week? Uh, get off of me! Eh. Go kill a turtle somewhere. Um. Oh, I also picked up Ambassadors number five. Uh, I am still loving this series, by the way, guys. Uh, this is the introduction of, I guess, I guess he's just called Australia. He's not Captain Australia, not like you know Admiral Australia. He's just Australia. They just just call him Australia. Uh, it's a really fun and interesting, very painful backstory. But in that, like, sardonic, Mark Miller kind of way. Like, he's, he's kind of, like, winking at you a little bit, going, huh? Huh? Uh, I thought it was really funny. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it yet. But, yeah, this this this, this issue was really good. Uh, another solid issue of Ambassadors. Uh, the art by Matteo Buffagini, or Buffangi, uh, was really good. Really high-octane. Um, like the, the way the action is sort of composed here is like dynamic and it's very clear. It's very clean too. Um, so yeah, I'm really into this again. I, I still have the same complaint as last time I talked about ambassadors with issue four. This is a five... No. This is a six-issue miniseries. This is issue five. We're still doing setup. And we still have, like, another hero to introduce. So, like, what are we... I don't know. Just what are we, what are we doing here, guys? What's going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, you know, I, I could totally see this. I could totally see Ambassadors ending and setting up the big game uh, uh, event that Mark Miller is setting up. Um, oh, and Paper LaRaz is going to be the artist for that. All right, all right. So this is the, the mystery book that Paper LaRaz was like. All right, cool. I'm down, I'm down. Um... Sweet. I'm, I, I, but yeah, still, it's just, I don't know how this is going to end. Uh, but yeah, I'm still really liking it. Uh, but I'm also just a big Mark Miller fan. Um, so yeah. Uh, Supreme says, my only problem with life story is that I'm not a fan of Chip's take on MJ. Because she doesn't get that much development. And I feel like she's reduced to the nagging girlfriend or wife stereotype. That's true, and that is a problem that I have with Life Story. I feel like... That really ties into my overarching problem with Life Story. Which is that... It wasn't really intended to be like a like a like like an eight-issue miniseries. It was intended to be... A... Uh, like a whole line that Chip was going to work on. Um, and then it got turned into just a Spider-Man miniseries. Um, so we're just kind of like hitting these characters at like their most stressful times in their lives. Like that's, and that's really why I think MJ comes off as such a cunt really. Like I don't think that she is and I don't think it, like, I don't think, I don't think Chip Jadarski thinks of MJ in that way, but we are just kind of picking up with Peter and MJ um, at, like, just the most tumultuous times in their lives, you know? Um, 
And from MJ's perspective, I could totally see why she's as angry as she is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it just needed to be fleshed out a little more. Uh, maybe if you're going to do six issues, do like oversized issues, maybe. I don't know. Um, but that's it. I, I don't know. That's. But yeah, I feel you. But beyond that, I, I, I still really like Life Story. Um, I just wish it was a little longer, that's all. Um, oh, the next book that I got, uh, and I didn't read this one yet, uh, is Vanish issue number seven. Um, of course I got the, the Daniel Warren Johnson cover because I'm just collecting all those. Daniel Warren Johnson is one of my favorite, uh, comic book artists working currently. Uh, it, like, it, literally anything by him I'm going to pick up and read. Uh, or just gawk at <laughs> like oh this is so cool uh he's a really cool guy i want to meet him at some point um i've heard nothing but great things about him in like real life but yeah i'm still really into this book um wait what am i talking about i did read this issue yeah no i'm like i'm, I'm tripping yeah okay yeah because this is the issue when they finally uh when he finally gets, like, taken down by this guy. And they, like, make that massive Man of Steel crater at the end of the issue. Um, and he's like, yeah, I gotta finish what I started. And, like, I should have killed you back at, like, Hogwarts. Or not Hogwarts. Like, it's the Everkeep, I think. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really into uh, Vanish. Uh, I don't know why Donny Cates had to quit uh, writing the Hulk. But... You know, it seems like he's devoted all of his attention on Vanish, and I'm I'm really into it. Um, I'm also really into Ryan Stegman's artwork. So just anything with with Stegman on it, I'm I'm down with. Um, and I haven't really talked about Ryan Stegman's artwork when I'm talking about the series, which is I don't know, kind of like a disservice in just discussing this book because so much of it is driven by like the high octane like dynamic art so yeah this 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 book's really good it's one of my favorite indies coming out right now um dude dude tripping tripping <laughs> i mean I, it, it'd be like that man it'd be like that you ever just come home from work and you're like oh my god I gotta take my I gotta take my, my my shoes off, and then you realize you're taking your shirt off, but you realize you're not home yet. You're like still in the lobby, and you're like, "Oh my god, what am I doing? I'm gonna get arrested! Oh no! Oh no!" And then you wake up, and it was a dream. You're actually sleeping on the bus. Happens a lot to me, actually. I don't know what those dreams mean, but it'd be like that. Finally done with cleaning. Jesus, dude. Yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> Go to bed. You have like a way more like demanding uh, career than I do. Yeah, you you get sleep. <laughs> you get sleep. Um, and the last books that I got this week. Uh, it's because, again, it was, like, a really small week for me. Um, I got Flash issues 797, 798, and 799. This is the conclusion to Jeremy Adams' run on The Flash. Um, this, <laughs> it's kind of funny. This wasn't a book that, like, I was really anticipating buying in single issues. Um... It was really like a book I was like just trade waiting for the longest time, but I just ended up getting the single issues because I just, I don't know, I fell in love with it, and I started collecting Flash War, and <laughs> from there on, I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get the rest of these, because I think the run's ending soon, and it was ending soon, so, this is it, <laughs> ah, um, it feels kind of rushed, honestly, like the, like, I don't know. I don't think this is an oversized issue, uh, $7.99, but 
it feels like a lot happens, but also not a lot happens. I don't, I don't know. Also, we just kind of, we end with Wally wearing his Rebirth costume, which, I mean, I'm not mad at. I love the Rebirth costume. I think Wally wearing red and silver is just perfect. It's my, it's like, this is honestly my favorite costume for Wally. Um, or I guess, like, minus the, the, the exposed hair, right? I prefer Wally to have, like, his hair hatted, you know? You know, I, I think that's that's the the sign of a mature Flash when your head is covered. Um, but, yeah, the, the red and silver look is, like, perfect in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, this was this was a really cool ending to the Jeremy Adams run on the Flash. And I honestly think this is going to go down as, like, one of the classics. I, I, I do legitimately think it's going to go down in the same vein as uh, Mark Wade's run, or I guess Mark Wade's initial run on The Flash. Uh, I think it's going to go down in the same vein as the Kerry Bates run on The Flash. I think it's going to go down in the same vein as the first Jeff Johns run on The Flash uh, with Wally West. Uh, like, everything he did up until... What's it called? Uh, is it like Rogue, Rogue War or Rogue Revolution? I don't, I don't remember. Um, but it's like the the arc that ends with Wally's kids being born. You know, like uh, I, I, I think, I think this could definitely go down as being like one of the the iconic uh, runs on the Flash. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really just happy that I was along for the ride with it. Um, I like the exposed heads, makes them stand out and, uh, look less dorky. I hear you on that. Uh, but I mean, I also have that thing where I, I think the Flash should look a little dorky, just a little bit. Um, uh, <laughs> I have those moments where I sit in my car cause I don't want to go inside and deal with what's inside. <laughs> Oh, dude, I feel you on that. Cheers to that, mate. Absolute cheers. Um. Ugh. I'm just going to go up and, like, look at some of the comments that I, like, completely missed when I was watching the, uh, Spider-Man gameplay. Let's see. Uh, Arcus said that, uh, Lizard was a kaiju in the Spider-Man 3 game. I should never played Spider-Man 3. Um. It always just kind of looked like a proto version of Web of Shadows to me, so I just that's why I never got it. Um, Craven's last hunt made Craven an actual threat. That's true. Uh, although Craven was like, I mean, I. Well, one, I would say Craven was always kind of a threat, but it also depended on who was writing him. Uh, because there are, like, stories throughout the 70s where Craven is sometimes a threat, and then there are stories where, like, he's just a, a one-panel punch joke. Um, so it really just kind of like, depended on, like, what the story was. But generally, Craven did kind of devolve into a joke. Um... But, like, the reason why Craven's Last Hunt really works is because that's the story where Craven sort of gets serious. And it sort of, like, retroactively makes all those older stories a little darker. Like, imagine if Craven succeeded in the 60s when he first showed up. Like, this man would have... This man would have... <laughs> this man would have, like, murdered this teenager. Not really murdered this teenager. He would, like, would have tranked Spider-Man buried this boy alive and then wear his costume 
and then just like beat people to death in the streets like that's 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 what you wanted to do when you when you wanted to hunt spider-man jesus christ or there's another read on this that i that i that i also have um i feel like craven's last hunt is also like the that is the culmination of all of craven's frustrations like before it was just oh I wanna I wanna I wanna fight Spider Man I I have to I have to defeat the spider I have to fight the spider I have to I have to grab him and and hold him in my arms and I I'm making this sound very uh, not safe for work but uh, <laughs> you know it, it was like a I wrestle you and then I I defeat you I I'm Craven the Hunter Sergey Kravenov um but just years of getting his ass handed to him there's this sort of like psychosexual obsession with spider-man that develops um like it's a very interesting book like there's a bit where after peter breaks out of the grave and he goes to fight craven craven talks about how like spider-man is is not comfortable with his touch. This is a bit where like Craven tries to touch Peter's face, and it's like a very, it, it it's like a, like a romantic sort of longing, where like he, he caresses him and Pete's like yeah get away from me, and I don't know it's, it's very fascinating. Like Craven wants to be inside of Peter, and he does that by wearing his clothes. Oh, Craven last time's a very weird book. Um. And I pick up on weird stuff every time I go back and reread it. Uh, it's just like a very fascinating book. Very well written. Very well drawn. I think most of it's drawn by Mike Zek. Which is hilarious because... <laughs> Mike Zek is the guy who drew uh, uh, Secret Wars. Which is just a big ass toy commercial. And then like a year later he draws this like ultra dark Spider-Man story about Kraven burying spider-man alive and having like a weird psychosexual obsession with him it's yeah i don't i, I love marvel comics in the 80s the, just you don't get that kind of magic these days you just don't like i'm sorry you don't <laughs> uh like holy crap that book is that, that book is amazing um Uh, Arcus uh, from earlier said they better have expanded the map or some new location. Um, like Tot. Tot. T O T K? What's T O T K? Um, is that like one of the Mel. Is that one of the Melden Ring games? Is that one of them Souls like games? I know God of War updated its map. Like you're you're kind of in some of the same places, but they also like give you new locations. Um But yeah, no, like they they have Brooklyn and Queens as playable areas it looks like. And I'm really excited for that. Because again, we we haven't had a playable Queens in a Spider-Man game since Ultimate Spider-Man. So I'm I'm down. Also Brooklyn. Uh which <laughs> kind of makes like Spider-Man Miles Morales feel weird. Like maybe that game should have just taken place in Brooklyn. I wouldn't have minded that. Like I mean Maybe it was like a time constraint thing. To, uh, thing. Maybe it was like a time constraint thing as well. Like, they couldn't build a whole new environment for another Spider-Man game, so they just put Miles in a modded version of New York. Which, or I guess not New York, Manhattan. Which, by the way, uh... 
I didn't see the Chrysler building in this gameplay demo. And I know that the Chrysler building isn't in Miles Morales because there's like a weird like rights situation. Which I didn't know buildings had like rights. I don't know. I was... Whatever. But that was just w very weird. It's also the reason why the uh, the Freedom Tower doesn't really look like the Freedom Tower in real life. Uh, like the, apparently they, they, they just couldn't get the rights to it. I don't understand how that works. I don't. I didn't know that buildings and public spaces had legal rights. I don't. Know. They're not people. They don't pay taxes. You don't get rights. Uh, Venom Blast. Uh, yeah, that was... Okay, so can someone please explain to me, like... So when the Venom Blast first showed up in the early Miles Morales comics, I didn't take that as electricity. I took it as, like... Like a, like a nervous system shutdown, or like a temporary nervous system shutdown. Sort of like, it's like a, like a spider will like bite you and you have, you get poisoned or something like that. You know, I, I didn't take it as him being Black Lightning. Which I guess he just is now. Which I don't really understand because spiders don't have electricity powers. That's we. I like, guess just weird. Like invisibility. Okay. All right. I can. I can. I can handle that. I can. I can. I can swallow that at least. Maybe I should not say it like that. But I can handle that, right? When he gets like Green Lantern construct powers, like he has in the comics right now, where he can can make electricity swords and stuff like that. All right, that's, that's, what are we doing? How is this themed like a spider at all? I don't, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. I don't get it. It's weird. But I, he's black, so he has to have electricity powers. That's just, that's just how superhero comics work, I guess. Um. Yeah, they can, yeah, they glide now. They glide now. They glide now. Um. Yeah, that's like a that's like a post MCU thing with like the the web wings from the what is it like Spider Man Homecoming? Uh, I mean it's it's like cool. It's a it's a cool design choice. Uh, I don't know. I think it's all right. Uh. Like, knee-jerk reaction is, eh, yeah, but, like, Peter was talking about how he's trying to develop web wings in the first game, so I just assume that, like, he just finds a way to perfect it in this game, so I'm, I'm cool with it. It's like building on your universe. That's cool. Uh... Uh, the first guy kind of reminds you of, like, a young Craven. Yeah. I thought that, uh... Well, when that trailer first showed up, I thought he was, like... The... I thought that was Craven. Like, they redesigned Craven, and he looks like a... Like a like a Hot Topic mercenary. Um... But then it just turned out that, like... He's just a guy who works for Craven. <laughs> um... Which I was okay with. I'm, I'm fine with that. I like that they kept... Craven as being an old man. That's like a that's like a big thing. Like Craven is old. He doesn't look his age, but he is old. Uh, they probably can't do the whole thing where he's old money and his family escaped the Russian Revolution. Um, just because I mean you can't make him that old. <laughs> like. You can't make him that old. That that makes him like what? 120 years old if we're going to be generous and say that he was born around the time of the Russian Revolution. But 
yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I do always see Craven as being an older guy, so I'm glad they kept that touch. Uh, I thought he always had web wings. Well, he always did have web wings. It's just they were like they weren't functional. They they just they look cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, good night, Tevya. Um, public places can also be private property because capitalism. Yeah, that's true. Um, Imagine your pinnacle story is you shotgunning yourself in the head. Well, it, it was the story for like that one senator who like killed himself on national television after he got like I think found out uh, for cheating on his wife, or maybe it was like a, like a he like slept a little he, like raped a little girl. I don't remember. I know something happened. And he like shot himself. Um. Sometimes that is the pinnacle of everyone's story. You just you just die, uh, in like the most dramatic fashion. Uh, Arca says, "You know what? Walla needs." Uh... Oh wait. You know what Wally needs else to his uh, red and silver costume? Silver runner shades that would make him look so much cooler. Oh, sweet! Uh, I, I'd be down for that. I would. I, I I like the goggles concept from Young Justice, where Wally has like the little goggles on his uh, uh, not cowl, but like his little mask. I think that'd be like a really cool addition for like a Wally West costume. I like that he has lenses. Uh, that's like kind of a a key Wally West trait that his mask has lenses whereas Barry's had like the exposed eyes um which I guess we see that the fucking Flash movie is also having Barry Allen take that from Wally too um yeah, so it'd just be like that sometimes it, it, it'd just be like that uh Barry's always stealing the cool shit from Wally um Supreme said, uh, also on a problematic Kitty, Claremont wrote an early 2000s X-Men mini where Kitty wore braids on her hair and tattoos in her arms in her college freshman days. I don't see how that's controversial. Like, I, like, is Kitty supposed to be, like, Hasidic or something? Like, is that just not a... Hmm. Sounded like an AO3 story. AO3. What? What's that? What'd that be? I almost read that as like AOC story, and I was like, what? What the? Is, does she game? Is she game? Uh. AL3. Oh, Arkham Origins 3? Wait, what? Dude, my brain is fried. I don't I don't I don't get I don't get acronyms right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh the Craven's a top three for me. Really? Like like top three Spider-Man villains, period? I never knew that. Craven's one of your top three? Huh. We always used to joke about how, like, lame Craven was back in high school. <laughs> With, like, Ultimate Spider-Man and how, like, he's just... He's, he's a discount Crocodile Dundee. I don't know. I like Craven, but, like, damn, that's, like, pretty high. You like him more than you like Big Wheel? 
Hmm. Or is Big Blue your number one? Actually, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious, guys. Uh, what are your top three Spider-Man villains? Like, just in general. Um. I guess for me, I'd, I'd say, like, Kingpin, Hobgoblin, and Doc Ock. No Venom. Yeah, Kingpin, Doc Ock, and Venom. I think it's pretty easy to tell, like, my decade bias when it comes to Spider-Man stories, just off that list. I'm, I'm definitely an 80s, 80s Spider-Man enjoyer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm curious to like know what what your like top three villains are. We know like at least one of Ziggy's is Craven. Um. Arkin says, I was always wondering why Craven never became a Daredevil villain. Would it suit him better wanting to kill the devil and eat his organs or something? <laughs> I think it's because Daredevil is just not animal themed. I think that's like literally just what it is. Because I've seen... I've seen Craven show up in like Black Panther books. And it's like, bro, what are you doing here? Uh... But I, I I think that's just what it is. He's just not animal themed. Big question: Why hasn't Craven the Hunter ever tried to go after Kitty Pride? Mm. Mm. Her her code name is Shadow Cat. Mm. Come on, Marvel, get on it. I mean, I know I know like Craven Senior is dead, but Craven Junior is like basically the new Craven, and he's kind of interchangeable so go for it come on craven versus kitty i will eat you young kitty yeah young kitty actually no i, I, I mm. does craven jr have a, a russian accent i don't think he was born no no he's not russian he probably just has like a, like a regular no, in fact, he probably has like an African accent because they're all they're all raised in Africa. Uh, where in Africa, I have no idea. Uh, maybe like the like the the African plains of like Zimbabwe. I can see that. Um, I can see like Craven's kids having like like African like Zimbabwean accents. Um. Oh, tears! Oh, tears of the kingdom. Okay. That's what that is. Um, there's no way they could build uh, Brooklyn for a spinoff game. Yeah. It, they could have just, like, waited, like, like, a year or something to put out Miles Morales in that case, for, like, two years. Because that game came out, like, two years ago, right? Could have just they could have, they could have put it out like uh last year. It's like hey we got the we got the Brooklyn section of 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 our Spider Man two PS five electric boogaloo map done. Uh uh Miles Morales game go. I would have accepted that. I thought it would, I think that would have been cool. Um. I full on thought it was electricity, mainly because I was like, oh, Black Hero, lightning, yeah. <laughs> Someone has to do a story about that, where it's just like, why do all black superheroes have lightning powers? I don't know, just, maybe the DNA in black people just gives you, it's the melanin, it's, it's, it's the melanin in your skin, it, 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 it filters super genes to be electricity genes, I don't know, I'll, any explanation would be 
just, I'll, something. I'll take something. I'll take anything. I just... <laughs> Why are we always, like... Our default is electricity powers. Uh... But MGB, the electrical, the electrical current that runs through our bodies is ever expanding. <laughs> uh, oh, that was good, Nicholas. Uh, on Silver Age X Men, uh, thoughts on Xavier's romantic feelings towards a teen Jean Grey. What was Stanley thinking? It was a different time. It was the 60s. It was a different time. Uh, the, the Catholic Church was still doing everything publicly. We were okay with it. It was just, nor it was just normal back then. I mean, that's like a, like a terrible, horrible answer to give, but like it's, it's the most realistic one, I think. Just standards were different back then. People were still just openly marrying off their, like, 13, 14-year-old daughters to, like, dudes in their 40s. Like, it was nothing. Just a common thing back then in the, in the mid uh, to late 20th century. Like, it, <laughs> it sucks, but it... it well, that's, that's part of our history. <laughs> um... But no, I also think it's just kind of like, I don't know. May so my, my my buddy Jack Genocide gets on me for this. Um, he says that I have uh, that Mark Miller Pornhub lens when I look at the Marvel Universe. Um, and I see everything as a porno. <laughs> but I don't know. May may maybe that's just a way to look at comics. Uh, but... I think that's what makes Marvel potentially... Not more interesting than DC, but, like, it's what separates Marvel from DC. If DC is, like, the home of heroes, you know, that's this, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the, the, the mountain on which Olympus stands. Like, that's what the DC Universe is. The Marvel Universe is, like, a dumpster fire condominium that is just, like, forever an absolute wreck. Um, filled with people who are just absolute monsters or wrecks of human beings um so as weird and creepy as it is i kind of like that it's weird and creepy no, I, I i like that there's this weird kind of uh there's this weird i don't even know how to describe it that's like a weird kind of like, like there's a bond that charles and Jean share that transcends the physical like i think there's something very interesting and taboo there that you can kind of talk about you can like use that as commentary on boarding schools and um like the inappropriate relationships that like teachers have with their students in those sorts of settings um you could also do an interesting commentary on how uh freedom fighters a lot of the time throughout history, despite their, uh, despite their causes, despite their fights, they are still flawed and they're still human. Um, like how Martin Luther King would like religiously cheat on his wife. Great man, but, mm. Uh, or like you know, you look at uh, the the like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was like the founder of um, uh, fuck, what's it called? Uh, the, the the Nation of Islam in America. Um, he had a whole movement to like unify the black community in like the what was it, like the 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 nineteen thirties, nineteen forties. But when you like when you look into uh, like the man himself, he was taking advantage of his position as the head of the nation of Islam. He was a womanizer. He was uh, engaged in like very inappropriate relationships with young girls and getting them pregnant. And just like all around, just maybe not a good person. And scratch off the maybe, he wasn't a good person. But 
you know, the cause was still noble. So I, I think you could really delve into that with Charles Xavier and the the weird, very inappropriate implications of like the relationship that he might have with Jean. Um, will anyone do that? Probably not, because we live in an age now where you can't have heroes uh, do anything that is that is remotely off color for the sake of uh, storytelling. So that's that that sucks, but I don't know. It 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 is what it is. I I think there's some interesting grounds for uh I I, th I think th I think there are grounds for for telling interesting stories with that. Um. Argus says, uh, "Why not though? Let's make Craven to be like." an old Rachel Ghoul type villain who's lived a lot and killed a lot of people through the ages. That's an interesting take. Ah, oh, like make him immortal. Hmm. Alright. I can see that. Um Supreme Omega says Harry Osborne versus Norman Osborne, which Green Goblin do you prefer? Uh Norman. 100% Norman. Um, uh, Nicholas Major. Uh, this is like I think this is the first time I've seen you in the chat, unless you like you're just running off of a bit a different name. But welcome to the chat if this is your first time. Um, uh, Nicholas says uh, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and Craven. Okay, okay. Um, did you see the trailer? Yeah, I did. Uh, we talked about it earlier in the stream. Um, we talked about it for like, like, like an hour. <laughs> um, uh, Arcus says, uh, Venom, Superior Spider-Man, and that's it. Oh, I, I can dig it. Um, Nicholas says, uh, cause Wolverine would be right behind her. Oh, for Cra <laughs> Craven. But you know what? I could also see Craven taking on Wolverine. I could see Craven being that crazy. He's like, ah, the Wolverine. Hmm. Yes. You have adamantium claws, and he pulls out like a vibranium, uh, like weaponry or like a uh, vibranium toolkit, and he's like, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're next on my hunt list. Like I could I could I could actually see Craven trying to take on Wolverine. Um. He would definitely lose, but I could, I could see him trying. Um, Craven would try to go after Squirrel Girl. He, he'd get his ass handed to him, but it'd still be funny to see. <laughs> I'd be down to see that. Um, Supreme says, on Kevin Smith's Daredevil, thoughts on Mysterio going against Daredevil and then killing himself? Do you feel it was a good story direction? Yeah. Dude, I love Guardian Devil. That's like one of my favorite Daredevil stories. It also sets the stage for everything that we've seen in Daredevil over the past 20 years. Um, Like, like if you really kind of like look at it, the death of Karen Page set the stage for Matt's grieving and the way in which he handles the lawsuit situation at the beginning of uh, uh, the, the Bendis run, which then spirals into the whole thing where um, the press, uh, they, they eventually like find out that Matt is Daredevil and then they start hounding him and then Matt sort of has this uh prolonged nervous breakdown which I honestly think he's still going through like I see, <laughs> like I, I like the way I see it guardian devil like emotionally breaks Matt and then everything from Bendis to Brubaker to Andy Diggle is just Matt like like circling the drain 
and fuck what's that what's that event called it's really terrible um god it's the end of uh the Randy Biggles run uh Shadowland like Shadowland is the culmination of Matt's like prolonged nervous breakdown but then Mark Wade's run after that is Matt sobering up it's him you know getting the help he needs it's him like you know getting back in the saddle and then everything from Charles Soleil onward is that breakdown just he, he couldn't keep it he couldn't keep his shit together he just couldn't keep his shit together and now he's the leader of the hand again so <laughs> yeah I, I don't know um I like the idea of of, of Matt just kind of like going on a on a downward spiral that never really seems to end and it's all Mysterio's fault <laughs> um I also didn't mind that Mysterio was the one who did it um because Quentin Beck's like just a straight up loser villain like that he is a loser like his whole role is to be a loser um So yeah, I, I, I didn't mind uh, what they did with uh, with uh, Quentin Beck there. Uh, imagine if they adapt Live Wire and they make her black. <laughs> we can't escape those allegations, dog. <laughs> Just all anyone who has superpowers in the Marvel or DC universe, like electricity powers, they just have to be black. It just is what it is. <laughs> um. Although I I will say I I'm not sure how you make her black, um, cause like her whole thing is being like a toxic ego type, and there's not a, a like just pulling off of like real world experience. I don't I don't see a lot of like black toxic e girls out there. I mean I'm sure they're there, but like I just don't I don't see them. Um. But if you know something I don't, feel free to use the chat uh, to educate me. I, I, I will accept that education. Um, I'm always down for, for, for some, uh, some internet education. Um, Arcus says, come on guys, let's start with the double standards. Some young boys are into MILFs and some young girls are into DILFs. Uh... <laughs> Uh, if it's not forced upon a person, it should be, uh, uh, look like some, something alien. Or it shouldn't be, uh, uh, looked at as something alien. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, look, some, some girls are into older guys and some guys are into older girls, but, like, when you're, when you're, like, a, like, a underage child, it's kind of, it's kind of wrong, kind of against the law <laughs> um at least like i don't know it it, it it depends on where you are at least in america it depends on where you are um i know some states say that like it's legal uh when you're like 16 to date like that's like the age of consent um uh, and there are like some states that like say that it's 18 but if you're dating beforehand it's okay um, but, like, generally, it's just, if you're, if you're, like, under 18, it's, it's illegal to do that. <laughs> uh, that's just, like, the simple explanation for it, or that's, that's just the simple rules, you know, not 18, then, then, then hit the bean. I, not bean, that's, I don't know, I tried to make a rhyme, but it didn't, it didn't work. Um, but. Yeah, like, how, how old is Jean Grey when she first joins the, uh, the, the Xavier Institute? She's, like, what, 14, 15? And Xavier's, like, like in his 40s? No, it's weird. No, nah, dude, it's, it's weird. <laughs> um. Idea. What if Kraven got Wolverine powers and adamantium claws? Um, then Spider-Man is fucked. 
like like royally fucked. Uh, yeah, he's he's not coming out the other the other end alive. Uh, Supreme Omega says on Heroes in Crisis. Does Tom King really deserve the ire and blame? Because a lot of uh, a lot of that felt like uh, it was editorially mandated. I don't know the whole story behind Heroes in Crisis. Um, or at the very least, I don't know like the whole story behind the development of Heroes in Crisis and how that story came to be. But I do know that Tom King wanted to tell a story about superheroes experiencing depression. That is an interesting concept. I just don't think it was handled very well. Um, even with like some of the other like, like some of the ideas that like I think are very clearly like definitively Tom King's ideas, uh, like when he's talking about uh, the inclusion of Harley Quinn, um, he was drawing upon like fan influence from people that he met at cons and stuff like that like that's something that he said in in like a couple interviews so i don't know man i i love tom king i i, I still consider myself a tom king fan i know that's like not a pop thing to say in the comic sphere but i still really like tom king um but that that yeah heroes in crisis just wasn't it it just wasn't it uh, Supreme uh, goes on to say on Mysterio and Craven, I feel if a character dies from a real life thing like suicide or disease like cancer they should stay dead in my view reviving characters from realistic deaths is tone deaf absolutely uh, it's why I'm ever thankful that Marvel has never brought Captain Marvel back to life because the death of Captain Marvel is like one of the best superhero comics, like Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image, everybody. It is one of the best superhero comics ever published. Like it, it like that book ends. I mean, spoilers for this like forty-year-old comic, but that book ends with Thanos, you know, Captain Marvel's like arch nemesis. Escorting him to the afterlife to meet death. That is... Uh, like, I... And it's, like, a beautiful story about, like, grief and how, like, different people react to grief. Like, I don't... Yeah, Marvel, please never undo Death of Captain Marvel. Please don't. Don't do that. It's like one of the best comics ever published. Just never, no. Please don't. Um, like, it ab is absolutely brilliant. Um, and I, I, I did really hate when they brought Mysterio back from the dead. I also didn't like... Uh, was it Nick Lowe or was it Dan Slott? When they talked about like how Mysterio came back from the dead. He's like, ugh. He's the master of illusion. Don't you think he faked his death? And it's like... Nah, dude. That... Even if he did, that's, that's just not a... That's not something you undercut. Like... Like, undercutting Guardian Devil sucks. It sucks really hard. And I like that... Uh, Nick Spencer... Sort of, like, walked back on that. And at least gave an explanation... For how Mysterio was able to come back from the dead. Where he was like, yeah, no, like, y you died. You blew your brains out. And this kindred monster pulled you out of hell. I like that. I, I genuinely like that. Um, actually, Marvel was resurrected several times after his death. Uh, what? No, it wasn't. Lies. You sit on a throne of lies. Where was he brought back? I gotta check those out. Um, begrudgingly, but I, I will, just because I'm curious. Um. I know Marvel flirted with the idea of trying to bring him back with, uh, 
uh, what was it, like, Secret Invasion? But that, that didn't, that didn't pan out. He was a scroll. Um... Let me see. Mm. Yeah, I don't see anything about him coming back from the dead. I know, like, his son, Genisvel, uh, pops up every now and again, but, like, yeah, I don't see anything about, like, the original, like, Captain Marvel coming back. Uh, but I won't discount you, though. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely look into that. Um, in the meantime, though, I am gonna go to bed. Uh, so, hey, thanks for everyone who showed up. Um, thanks for like, you know, uh, watching that like crazy Spider-Man, uh, like gameplay trailer. Um, I don't know. Am I being like a little too anal about the whole black suit thing? It just, I don't know. It, it looks like a leather daddy outfit with like, like ball sacks stapled to the arms and legs and back of his neck. It just it looks weird, but I don't know. Um, it might, again, it, the, the suit could very easily grow on me. Um, just like the, uh, the suit from the first game grew on me. So, I don't know, let me know down below in the comment section if you're showing up after the fact, after we've already been live, uh, what you thought of the Spider-Man 2 trailer, uh, which I still think should have been Spider-Men, because there are two Spider-Mans, should have been should have been should have been two spider spider mans but you know it is what it is it just is what it is but uh uh you need a you need a prostate massage to calm you down uh <laughs> i mean i'll take one you know uh <laughs> but uh thanks for coming by guys and yeah i will catch you in the next one uh i also have a video coming out tomorrow um I, did, I was going to publish it today, but I figured with the whole, like, Spider-Man reveal trailer, which everyone kind of, like, figured was going to come out today, I, it was going to get swarmed, but I, I, I'm saving it for tomorrow, or I guess later today, um, but, yeah, it's about the 90s and how the 90s comics are actually pretty good, and how everyone is just wrong, the internet lied to you, um... But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you later. Hasta la vista. Peace.